So here we are back with the GPO 746 for the hard of hearing. I've um, connected a line cord and I've just finished reassembling the dial. Um, the dial pretty much went back the same way. As you can see the dial is assembled now and sounding a lot better and a lot quicker in the return, so I'm quite happy with that now. What I'm about to do is just double check that I've wired everything up and for um, demonstration purposes just to reconfirm where everything goes. So, um, you remove straps. These are all, all these little terminals are marked from 1 to 9, 10 to 19, and they go along in order that way. So you remove strap 6 and 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, which has been removed. Remove straps 4 and 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, with the strap has been removed. Um, insert strap 5 and 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, it's got a strap there, which is perfect. The red wire of the line cord goes to number 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is the red of the line cord, that's perfect. The blue of the line cord goes to number 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which it has done. Insert straps 16, 17, 18 and 19. Well, they should be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19. Now, there's a strap missing between 16 and 17 because of the bell on and off switch, which I'll go through in a second. So white wire of line cord goes to 18, so 19, 18 is the white wire, so that's perfect. The green wire is to 15, so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which it is. And then we need to insert a 3K resistor between terminals 4 and 5, so 1, 2, 3, so it's between 4 and 5. So, I will just grab a resistor. Which I have here. So basically we want to wrap this around the terminals at 4 and 5. So there we are in 1. Can be quite fiddly to get your hands in these, but so there we are. And insert a rectifier between terminals one and two. Well, as you can see, there's a rectifier being inserted there already. So now we need to look at the bell on and off switch. So it says remove strap 16 and 17, which I have done leaving straps 17, 18 and 19 in place with the white of the line cord which we've got. Connect the brown wire, which is this brown wire here, from the switch to terminal 16, so 19, 18, 17, 16, which it is. And then connect the grey and the blue wires, which are these two together um, to terminal 17, which is the one up, 19, 18, 17, which they are. So hopefully we will now wide this for the bell on and off switch and for the modern socket. So what I'm going to do now is put this to one side and we're going to concentrate on this handset cord, an extra strap here, Let's get this out of the way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to heat this up with my heat gun. I've wrapped it firmly around this steel sort of peg. It's quite a thick peg. Um, and the idea now being is that once I heat this up, it'll sort of keep its springiness and, and reform back.
I'll flip it over. Right, that's got that nice and hot now, so we'll just leave that to cool to one side. So the next thing we can do is we can put this bezel around. What we have to do is um, basically line these notches up and then twist it round to find that the bezel will line up the slot where the finger stop goes, which is that way. So when I drop that down now, it'll be where the, the finger the finger rest is there. and cool now. The first thing we can wire up now, back wire up again, is the receiver or the speaker. So again you just slide these underneath the underneath the washers. Tighten up the nut. You have to make sure these can all these connections are fairly tight because it will um, save you problems with anything if anything happens to be crackling. Normally when these phones tend to crackle it's because there's a, a sort of a intermittent connection somewhere so to make sure these things are fairly tight but not, not, not too tight, overly tight, just fairly firm. It's just avoiding any crackles. those nice and tight and we have to make sure that these go behind the bracket because we've got the the thumb wheel here so we can reattach the cap for the earpiece now this wire is nice and cool so we can unthread this and hopefully the board has gone a bit more how it should be. Yes, I think that's gone pretty nice now. It's got all its springiness back. It's amazing how well that trick works, really. I'm always impressed with how well they can come back springy again. So this is a sort of a, a, a twist and fit system. So you sort of thread all the wires through the little aperture here and then you sort of feed it through and then with your pliers you twist just to get it in the opposite opposite position of where it should be. And it means that it's Firmly, securely in place. Right now I've written a diagram. We should have the blue wire and the yellow wire which connect to our microphone. And then at the very top terminal, A1, we have a green wire, a green stay terminal, so I'll just have to wind the screw out of it. green wire this can be rather fiddly which is why you can my pliers are helpful to hold the things into place they haven't given you a lot of space to work in here Again, you want to make sure these are fairly firm because it will eliminate any crackling that may be going on later. And that's followed by the red wire. Probably hold that one with my finger.
which is then So now all we need to do is connect our new electronic microphone. These electronic microphones generally aren't polarity sensitive, so it shouldn't matter what they we connect this. So now we've got that wired in there correctly, we can drop the microphone in and screw. Firmly in place. It's now starting to look like a phone again, isn't it? Now then, we install the handset lead. Fresh buttons, there they go. So the red of the handset goes to T1 which I believe is the green one. And then T3, which is the blue one. And then the white one which I believe is T10, which goes here, this pink cable. Now hopefully, I've wired that up correctly. I just need to adjust the bells and work out whether the on and off switch works, and also if we've got our amplifier working. So what I'm going to do is bounce that on there. I'm going to plug the phone in and then we'll do a ring back test and while the phone is ringing I can adjust the bells for the, the best sound. now plugged in so let's try the yes we get a dial turn and I think you can probably hear turning the wheel up and down increases that so let's start I do a ring pack test so now when I
I think we're getting somewhere near where it should be. I'm going to tighten that one up. I think that one will be all right where it is. Yes, I'm happy with that. So if I lock the screw down there, I mean the bell won't want to move. Let's just do a time check and try the. So that's quite loud. You wouldn't, you wouldn't really want to hold that to your ear. So basically, that's the um, the phone complete now. Um, the one thing it does tell you to be careful of when you have the um, amplifier on full is that you may get feedback, a howling effect. So. Um, that's the only thing, this will actually go so loud that it will um, feed back to itself. Um, just before I put the case on, we better check the um, bell on and off button. So what I'll do is I'll just when the bell is ringing we will put the switch down so we, now we should be able to mute the bell. And as you can see, it does actually turn the bell off. So there we are. Um, we'll just put the, the case back on. Again, these can be quite awkward to put the dials on, but um, yes, I think uh, all in all, not a bad um, bad restoration, and of course um, it's quite convenient for somebody who's hard of hearing, they, they can turn the volume up quite, quite loud so they can hear the person on the other end, so um, yes, a nice uh, useful phone, um, as long as you've got the um, support for pulse dialing, um, a very practical and useful phone, especially for somebody who struggles to hear. So I'm quite pleased with that.